In this video, I'm going to show you how to write clean dynamic SQL queries and execute them with Python. The video is based on David Muzzarelli's article entitled Dynamic Pure SQL Where Clauses and Optional Joins, which is available at the URL shown here. First of all, assume we have a simple table built with this create table statement and with this data in it. We want to prompt the user for a country and then show the customers in the country the user chooses. Here's how the app works. I get prompted for a country. Let's type Italy. I press enter and it gives me the five companies that are in Italy. The SQL statement that gives us those results looks like this. Select name from customers where country equals Italy. And here's the Python file. I'm using PyMySQL to connect to my MySQL database and to run the, the SQL queries. And then I have my connection string in a separate module called connection uh, in a connect function. Here's our first function that we're interested in from David's blog. The function is called customers filtered and it takes two parameters, active and country, both with default set to none. After creating my connection, I start my query string. Query gets select star from customers where, that's the beginning of the string, and then I'll dynamically create the where clause. The way I did this was to start with an empty list, filters. And then if active or country are filled in, I add those to the where clause, and I'll show you how. If active is not none, filters.append active equals percentage active s. The percentage active s will be filled in with the active parameter before we run the query. We do the same thing with country. If country is not none, filters.append country equals percentage country s. And country s or percentage country s will be filled in with the country parameter when we run the query. Then we append this to our query by joining the items in our list on the word and with spaces around it. So that if there's more than one item in the list, if there's both active and country filters, it'll say active equals percentage active s and country equals percentage country s. If there's only one, then there's nothing to join, so it will only just give us one of them. For example, country equals percentage country s. We could print the query to show what came out, but I'm going to comment that out. And then we have our parameters dictionary. Active is set to whatever they passed in for active, and country is set to whatever is passed in for country. Okay, then with our connection as cursor, we're going to execute the query. And we do that by passing two parameters in, the query, or the string that we've just created, and the parameters. We set result to cursor.fetchAll. That's a PyMySQL thing. It gets all the results, and then we return result. So all we have left to do is, is call this function, and we do that in our main function. So the first thing we do in main is we set input country to the variable country. And then for customer and customers filtered, country equals country we print customer name. So this customer's filtered, country equals country, will run a query like we saw before, and it will loop through the results, printing each customer's name. So this works just fine, but the SQL is a little messy. So we'll look at a different way of doing the same thing with slightly easier SQL or slightly less messy SQL. Here we are. The function is called in the same way. In other words, it has the same signature, active equals none and country equals none. We make our connection, but our query in triple quotes, so we can have it across multiple lines, is select star from customers where percentage active x is null or active equals percentage active s. So this basically passes in the check to the SQL statement. So if they didn't enter anything for active, if percentage active s is null, then it won't bother checking the second part of the OR statement, OR active equals percentage active s. But if they did enter something for active, then it will check the second part. The same thing goes for the country part of the statement, and percentage country s is null. If that's true, it won't bother checking the next part of the statement, OR country equals percentage country s. That part only gets checked again if something was passed in for country. And the rest is exactly the same. So this is the cool thing that David demonstrates in his blog post. By taking advantage of this null check in SQL, we can avoid a lot of extra code in Python. We can use a similar approach for joins. Imagine we have another table, an orders table, 
the table is created with this create table statement and the data looks like this. The program runs like this. We prompt the user to see if they want to show the orders and if they choose Y. It runs the statement with the join showing all the company names and the total amount of orders they've placed. We can run it again just by calling main. This time we'll choose N and this time it just shows the company names. So how do we do that? With this SQL statement right here. The important parts of this are we're selecting the name and the sum of the value as total from customers as U, left join orders as O, on, and this is the magic, true equals percentage flag S and O customer ID equals U dot ID. So it only runs the and part of that, the O customer ID equals U dot ID, if the first part of that is true because both parts of the and have to be true in order for the and to be true. So when we call customers filtered, we pass in a flag. And if the flag is true, it will do the join. If the flag is false, it stops when it sees this check and it doesn't run the join because essentially what it's trying to do is join true on false and that will never happen. We scroll down. In our main, we set the user's input to show orders. And if show orders dot lower is equal to Y, then we loop through our customers returned from customers filtered when we pass in true. Else, we loop through our customers returned from customer filters when we pass in false. And that's all there is to it. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks again to David for the inspiration for this video. Check out his blog at the URL shown here for other great programming articles.